of the council, members of the media, online viewers, radio listeners via St. Monica Radio 107.9 FM and respective radio stations island-wide. I'm Rolaika Roach and welcome to the live Council of Ministers press briefing for today, Wednesday, February 5th, 2020. At this time, I invite the Minister of Justice, the Honorable Egbert Duran, to address you. Thank you, Ms. Roach. Good morning to you, to the Honorable Prime Minister, my colleague ministers, members of the media, and St. Martin on a whole. On Tuesday, the 28th of January, Mr. Manning, member of the Supervisory Board, retired. On behalf of the ministry, I would like to publicly express my congratulations and gratitude to Mr. Wilfred Manning, who served on the Supervisory Board for the inmates of the prison for 30 years. I joined the rest of the prison staff and wish Mr. Manning Godspeed and all the best in his future endeavors. Last week, I had the opportunity to be part of the witnessing the promotions of members of the Youth Brigade. I would like to con and congratulating them in general, more so those that were being promoted to higher ranks in the organization. I would also like to take this opportunity to say to the youth of St. Martin that there are great opportunities to get positively busy within your community in regards to your own development and to make St. Martin a better place, preparing yourselves to make an acceptable difference. On Monday, February 2nd, 20 cadet officers were sworn in. The ministry is continuously seeking to better serve our people and 20 new officers were sworn in and they will continue their trajectory into becoming police officers, thus strengthening the services of KPSM. My message to them was love what you do and do what you love and always preserve and value your integrity and your credibility because once this is lost, you can never get it back. In the ending of last year, there was quite an upstir in regards to the closing of the Icon Foundation home. I had meetings in the ending of last year as well, and I also got a follow-up from the Vogderat and the SJB. The miners that previously lived in the Icon home have been relocated. At the time of the closure, there were six miners residing at Icon. Three have been placed back to their black with their parents, and the other three miners have been placed in foster homes. These minors are being intensively monitored by the Family Guardianship Department of SGIB. I would also like to add that we are now in the preliminary stages of brainstorming in terms of building a new home and having the, this set up for future and it be controlled by government. For the future and it be controlled by the government. We had a meeting, yes, I had a meeting two days ago with uh, SGIB and Vogderat. So once more details become available, this will be made known to the general public. And lastly, in regards to the prison, based on reports that were published today concerning the safety of the prison, I would like to let the general public know that this matter has my full attention and I would like to make it clear that it is the duty of the country to do its utmost best to secure the safety of both the staff and the inmates at the Point Blanche prison. And I would like to leave it there for now. I would also look forward to any questions that members of the media may have. Thank you very much. Thank you, Minister Duran, for your opening remarks. At this time, I invite the Minister of Public Housing, Spatial Planning, Environment and Infrastructure, the Honorable Christopher Waver, to address you. Thank you, Ms. Roach. Good morning to the Honorable Prime Minister, colleague minister, members of the media, and a special good morning to the people of St. Martin. As part of enhancing our customer service at the Permits Department and to in increase the efficiency and output of the department, I am pleased to announce that the online appointment system for the Permits Department has been in test phase for some weeks, now internally, and is ready to launch. The queue of visitors to the Permits Department is already being managed via a Qmatic tic ticketing system. A self-service feature for clients to make appointments online will go live in the first week of February, which should be this week, via the government's website appointment booking page at appointments.stmartingov.org. Additionally, appointments can still be made without internet at the customer information desk in the lobby of the main government building. 
The Permits Department is also working together with the Public Service Center to create a drop-off box that existing clients can deposit documents such as payment receipts without needing an appointment. The drop-off box has been ordered and is awaiting delivery and placement. The box will be emptied daily by the Permits Department. As I mentioned last week, a workshop, a workshop took place where representatives of the Ministry of Romi, NRPB, World Bank, and the Netherlands were present to discuss the way forward with regards to the works at the landfill. The reason for this workshop is due to the standstill and uh, with agreements as to the way forward when handling the landfill. Um, as I mentioned last week as well, the bulldozer had arrived, but due to um, how the World Bank had categorized the, the landfill in 2018, we were not allowed to do any civil works until the resettlement uh, took place. I'm happy to announce that due to the new developments and the hard work of the Ministry of Romi, there has been a change of ground situations on the landfill. Since taking over the management of the landfill using just the national budget to be able to carry out the management, um, Fromi has carried out excavation and fire suppression on the landfill. Due to the new assessment where the World Bank was present last week, they now view the, the situation of the landfill fire has been ch changed from a national emergency incident to a matter of improving the sustaining quality daily landfill operations. So to state briefly, with the new results of testing, um, the World Bank has now categorized the landfill as just a daily operational function and therefore will help with the daily operations and does not see the landfill as a national emergency any longer. What does this mean? This means that the as I spoke about with the bulldozer, civil works are allowed now to take place in a contained um, manner, and, and it's a daily operational for the landfill improvements. In response to the latest assessment of the ground situation, both parties agree that emergency fire suppression is no longer warranted as a top priority that has to be completed before other landfill operation improvements and intervention. As it pertains to the resettlement, this may no longer specifically be a prerequisite of starting of civil works on the landfill. So I believe that this, but I must say, however, that the resettlement does have um, the concern of the government and is still a priority, although not being a requirement anymore as to the civil works being started. I must commend the hard work of the Ministry of Romi for having made such an improvement from the 2018 to present where these new assessments have taken place. So this concludes my updates and I await any questions from the media. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Waver, for your opening remarks. At this time, I invite the Prime Minister and Minister of General Affairs, the Honorable Silvera Jacobs, to address you. Thank you, Ms. Roach. Good morning to you, my colleague ministers, those members of the media present, as well as support staff of the various ministries, and to the people of St. Martin, a very good morning to you. Uh, of course, it's an honor for me to be here this morning. I must inform that um, though the plan had been for both Ministers Irian as well as Minister uh, Pamela gordon Carty to be here this morning, that uh, Minister Irian had the opening of a conference that he had to attend and will come in as soon as time permits, hopefully before we end for any questions that may come from the media. And um, Ms. Gordon Carty, Mrs. Gordon Carty was called away on an emergency that needed her immediate attention. So if, of course, um, she can return, of course, she will be here as well before the press briefing ends. 
the summit, it was actually a summit that the Minister Arion had to open. It's a tax and financial management summit, which he organized, and he also has guests from the IMF and CARTAC on the island at the moment. In other updates from the Ministry of General Affairs, as Prime Minister, I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate the St. Martin Youth Brigade who, which hosted its annual promotional ceremony last Friday. We as members of government were able to witness the promotions of Sergeant Major, Sergeants and First Class Cadets to Corporal and Aspirants. And it, this is a great endeavor whereby the youth of St. Martin is kept positively busy. In fact, this brigade has been known to turn around youth who are actually going down the wrong path. So I'd like to commend them on their continued great efforts and in seeing the numbers grow because every year that I attend these ceremonies, I see even more youngsters who are gaining in discipline, who are gaining in leadership, and who are now seeing a future in some type of uniformed um, services, which of course St. Martin needs. I would also like to congratulate uh, Mr. Uh, President Daniel Gibbs as um, representative of government, we were also invited to their New Year's reception on Friday, which was held at the Collège Monde Accord Junior High School in Concordia, Marigot. Um, one of government's priorities is definitely to continue to work cohesively with our partners in the North. And um, what Mr. President Gibbs mentioned was having actually a St. Martin Congress, which would have representatives from both sides, actually working together, planning what is best for our countries as one St. Martin. So we do look forward to that and um, wish the president and his cabinet much success in the years to come. Also having celebrations, which I believe deserves some congratulatory message, is Sol which opened the last of its five stations on Friday um, at the Madame Estate location and also bringing on new brands which are very good for St. Martin in keeping our vehicles. One of the reasons it was a good, um, a good idea to be in attendance at such an event for government is that specifically after the hurricanes, the collaboration with Seoul served as a one of the means by which we could continue to service the public of St. Martin by them providing us with gas and oil. And of course, government was able to protect their facilities so that the country always at no time was without gas or oil, which is necessary for the cleanup, for the emergency vehicles of government to be able to take care of our needs. So congratulations once again to them. And we also hope to be able to continue to collaborate with them in the future. On the issue of, I would believe, um, artistic uh, promotions. There was a book launch, and as you may know, I'm a staunch supporter of literacy here on St. Martin, and our local artist, uh, Miss Luki Morales, who's also a civil servant here at Buck in General Affairs, launched her 15th book entitled Storm, which tells a story of two St. Martin boys um, who experience hurricanes Irma and Maria so it is a very good book for young children of course and and young adults to read but it also good for them to be able to process the emotions that they uh, encounter during that storm some people may not be yet ready to do that but it is good to know that we have local artists that are putting out literature to encourage reading and sharing and as usual i always promote that as parents it is our duty to ensure as first teachers of our children that reading takes place on a daily basis to build confidence vocabulary and of course intelligence congratulations to miss luki morales and the beyond cultura foundation on the front of everyday news in terms of the Ministry of General Affairs. Ongoing meetings are taking place within the ministry on, with the department heads to further improve effectiveness and efficiency within the Ministry of General Affairs. Um, I'll be updating you in the weeks to come as to how we expect to tackle that. Um, this week also I held meeting with public health officials, especially related to the 
threat from the coronavirus here on St. Martin. At that time, they were also able to update me on the fake news that was being circulated related to the ship that came into port yesterday and um, clarified also during our press conference that this was no threat to St. Martin and that the persons that had been reported ill on the ship were just suffering from flu or other gastrointestinal issues that had nothing to do with the coronavirus, thereby allowing the ship to enter the port and the visitors to be able to take part in St. Martin's hospitality. Later in the evening, we also met several members of government, including um, SG of TIAT, Minister Irion of Finance and myself, with several crew stakeholders from around the, let's say within the region as well as further abroad. The FCCA was represented. Um, there was a town hall meeting yesterday as well, which was slated as a success. Um, Carnival Corp was represented as well as MSC, the cruise line MSC, which is growing and um, really looking to have more calls here in St. Martin. What was very interesting in those meetings is the attention that they are giving to St. Martin, thereby ensuring that St. Martin remains a viable destination. Um, they are also very much interested in investing in St. Martin. And so St. Martin now has to be able to find, uh, ad identify new and diverse tours, especially cultural tours, which are the rage and which would distinguish us from other destinations. And the cruise industry is also interested in us having attractions that would go into the nighttime, which would encourage overnighting. Of course, they would have to get special permission from government to do that. But this has been requested for several years already. But we know that the nightlife, especially in the Phillipsburg area, has diminished. And so finding ways to bring business to St. Martin during the evening and night hours would encourage stay over cruises. That would then mean an economic benefit for St. Martin. And they are also willing to invest in these areas. So these are areas we as government need to seriously look at. And of course, the regular business of government continues on a daily basis. And I would like to announce, and it will come forth in more detail in a press uh, release, but I am slated to travel with the Minister of Finance uh, to the Netherlands to have further discussions on the liquidity support that is still pending, as well as uh, other key issues within some of the agreements that have been made. So I would take the opportunity now to uh, sit, and I see the Minister of Finance has arrived. Um, welcome, and we will await any further questions from the media. Thank you. Thank you, Prime Minister Jacobs, for your opening remarks. As the Prime Minister indicated, the Minister of Finance is here. However, he will not be making any opening statements, but available for any questions the media may have. We now move on to the question and answer session. Nakisha Boseman of the Daily Herald, you have the floor. Good morning to the ministers. Good morning to all present, all watching. My first question is for Minister Irian. Um, last week, there was an um, announcement made in regards to the Leonard Connor School, where they had some relocation of students. Can you provide an update on that? What are some of the extent of the structural damages within the classrooms, and um, is reconstruction um, going to be taking place soon? Good morning, one and all. Um, sorry for being late. I have uh, today. I've organized. Uh, a tax summit, a tax and financial summit, where we brought um, key stakeholders together, uh, World Bank, IMF, CARTAC, uh, our tax department, our financial department, our finance department, and we brought them together today to solve, uh, to come together to come to decide on the way forward for St. Martin in terms of our financial um, future. And I will be sending a press release, and I'll be sending it to the, the media this afternoon for an update on that. But yeah, we are right now at the central bank having these discussions. They started at 8 o'clock, and it ends at 4. Your question pertains to the Leonard Connor School. We received some complaints to uh, potential mold in the classroom. Immediately, we sent uh, a prof the professionals to go and clean the schools. 
and uh, they started the mold remediation process. During the heavy downpour of rain, we noticed a lot more um, leaking in the schools and so forth. And then it was also decided with uh, the World Bank that we need you know, that we need to find an immediate solution, which was then relocating certain classrooms to other locations. The repairs, unfortunately, have not begun as yet. The Lankana School falls under the repair program of the World Bank and Trust Funds, NRPB. Uh, it's a tedious project. I've mentioned before that, you know, that putting the World Bank in between um, emergency repair building was not the best um, option, in my opinion. But we are working through it, and I think now the World Bank employees themselves have seen the devastation and seeing the, the, the state that we're in right now in terms of rebuilding, and they themselves now have also pushed, made an extra effort to get things done a lot faster. Uh, what I would like to say though on a, a, a side note in terms of repairs, outside of the World Bank uh, trust funds, we also have the, our insurance funds. And I would like to say that to our, as a government, we also have to take a keen look at our contracts. Uh, we have to also hold our, uh, our service providers, our contractors accountable. I'll be looking at Vromi more often now also to have them look at our contractors even more um, because I don't believe that uh, being a local business should be a prerequisite for bad performance or poor quality. You know, I, I won't have, once I am the face of the Ministry of Education, Culture, and Sports, I would not be accepting um, any contractor to have uh, mediocre work, um, too many delays. You know, we have, comp we have schools that started be to build even before the hurricane. It's been four years now since uh, Prince William Alexander School. Um, so I want to stress that point that I will be looking at all the current contractors. Um, and I, I, had a, I had a meeting with some of my staff, also the SG. And I believe as a government, we should not always be on the defensive, but we should also be on offensive. You know, I'm not gonna wait until a contractor takes us to court. Um, I will be looking at our contracts, our clauses, and see where there's a breach, where they're not performing, where they haven't met the criteria, and start to look at pulling contracts if, we, if need be. Uh, at the end of the day, I have to represent the people. Um, again, I am the face now, and I don't mind being accountable for the situation. I inherited the situation, yes, and I don't mind being accountable for it. But as long as I'm the face, I will not allow contractors to have projects delayed anymore. And um, I think they don't understand the reality of students. You know, they, they see their business, but they don't understand the reality of what teachers have to go through, the students have to go through, and we as a government have to go through. So, and I would also like to say to, to contractors, you know, uh, my staff and the ministry is an extension of me. And I will also not be taking any disrespect to my staff and the ministry is also a disrespect to me. So, um, and the people of St. Martin. So we will be, again, looking at the contractors, going over the situations that we are country f currently facing, and um, looking to start the process of getting the schools built back on time and fast. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Edion. Lyndon Brown of BCN TV, you have the floor. Good morning to the people of St. Martin and all the ministers that are here present today. Um, question to the Prime Minister. Let me prepare the question. Um, I think all, all ways and all times, ministers should be respected. Um, to the Prime Minister, there was an uproar in the, um, on the island yesterday, Minister. Who, who are the legitimate media to give information to the public? Um, it was scary and it was very fearful yesterday where um, it had been said that the virus, the coronavirus, is here and St. Martin and it came with the ships, our ship. Um, Minister, 
um, you know you have heard about it. Um, please speak to the people of St. Martin in this matter, which is so serious. Thank you for that, Mr. Brown. First of all, I believe I addressed this topic in my opening statements, as well as yesterday in our press conference or address, I don't know what they called it, which was hosted by DCOM. DCOM, the same persons that are hosting this press briefing today, are the official persons or the official entity of government to disseminate official information. Also to other media stakeholders. Um, press releases are sent via DCOM. Any information coming out of government should go via DCOM. So I believe it is irresponsible of any other media house, individual, to assume that information they are receiving is correct and broadcast it as fact. They should always corroborate that information with the Department of Communications, known as DCOM, and um, there is government's website, there is the St. Martin Gov Radio, and there's a Facebook page as well. So there are several ways and venues through which the general public, as well as the media, can get information. And I believe it is very irresponsible to be promoting videos, um, WhatsApp messages, uh, etc., that is unofficial. And whether you're asking a question or making a promotional video, I know a lot of people are doing it for the likes and the clout, but think about the detrimental effect it has on the economy of St. Martin, on the psyche of the people, especially if they might see that person in uh, a status as an official reporter. So I am cautioning any and all. Of course, there is freedom of the press. You may ask questions, but I don't think you should assume the answers based on um, quote unquote melee that is spread out there that is not corroborated by fact always come to the official Department of Communications for what is actual news. I hope that answers your question. Thank you, Prime Minister. Andrew Bishop of St. Martin News, you have the floor. Thank you, Rolaika. Good morning to the honorable ministers of the council. I'd like to beg your indulgence to wish the Council of Ministers a happy new year since I have not had the opportunity to do so before. And also congratulate the politicians who have braved all odds to, to contest the recently held elections. My question is for the Prime Minister. Prime Minister, I've noted with interest the comments or rants by a senior civil servant in the Ministry of VSA who took the time out to criticize the Ministry on social media. We'd like to know what the consequences of such behavior are, what the LMR speaks to the cases such as these, although we are aware that there is freedom of speech. Thank you, Mr. Bishop, for that question, as well as for your well wishes. On behalf of the council, I would say thank you. Uh, as it pertains to civil servants and their freedom of speech, um, I believe if you are mentioning the recent um, statements made or video made, live feeds made uh, during private time, I believe that was addressed by the particular minister. Um, as Minister of General Affairs, I have asked also what are the rights and um, responsibilities of a civil servant as it pertains to information. I can tell you that I have not received that information as yet uh, in terms of what the LMA, LMA allows civil servants to disclose. But I believe um, if we were talking about a private business, it would have had, of course, um, much faster repercussions. Um, it is the responsibility of anybody working for an establishment to maintain um, some type of um, non-disclosure of certain facts. I believe, um, yes, people can be frustrated, but there are ways and means to handle that. And I believe internally is where that should be dealt with. Again, if the LMA, LMA allows for the public statements to be made, I cannot ascertain at this moment. 
However, just in terms of proper conduct, I would have expected that it would have been handled differently. That is my opinion on the matter as the Minister of General Affairs responsible for personnel and organization. I am having that question answered from that department. And as soon as we know more, we will sensitize the civil servants in terms of that. I know for sure I have seen things that everyone for sure knows is inappropriate is the leaking of confidential documents. Um, documents passed through the organization, some of them are confidential, some of them are not necessarily confidential, but they are internal documents. And it is inappropriate for such documents to end up in social media and the media. If someone wants to quote from such documents, I can understand. But to actually print such documents, as former Minister of Education back in 2016-17, I dealt with a case such as this, and um, you know, I called the ministry or the departments to order in that regard. And of course, the usual warning letters and the like can be issued. Um, with technology advancing, it would be, of course, easy to find out where the leaks have happened. So by this, I'm admonishing not just what you mentioned, Mr. Bishop, but also the leaking of government documents. Um, we must be able to respect the role in which we play at each level and understand that when we speak about government, it is not just about the people that you see sitting here, but like the minister mentioned, the ministries and the civil servants are an extension of us. They are the ones actually executing the works and the ones that we rely on. So we need to build a good relationship with them, but they also need to understand their roles and responsibility. And I'll be ensuring that each and every one knows that. Thank you, Prime Minister. Thank you, Prime Minister. Dimitri Wheatfield of the Daily Herald, you have the floor. So um, good morning to everyone, the ministers present, and everyone watching on um, various forms of media. My first question is to um, Finance Minister Arian. I'm glad that you brought up the central bank this morning because my question is directly related to that. Um, and if you will allow me, it'll be kind of like a multi-stage question because I think the answers would be quite easy to these questions. Um, how many members are on the board of the central bank that are allowed for Samaritan? Um, so that's how many, how many members do we currently have on the board? in what positions, and how many members for St. Martin are missing, if any, and how soon do we expect these positions to be filled? Thank you for your question. We have, uh, the Central Bank has seven board members. We have three that represent St. Martin, uh, and we have three that represent Carousel, and we have one that uh, re represents both. So all the positions are filled. Um, yeah, I think that's it. That's all three questions, right? Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Minister Edion. We now move on to the second round of questions. Nakisha, you have the floor. Thank you. My second question is for Minister Jacobs. Um, can you provide an? Can you kindly provide an update on the formation process, given that the vetting of incoming MPs is today? Thank you, Ms. Boatsman. Uh, the formation process for the incoming government, well, the MPs have nothing to do with that, actually. Um, the elected, the 15 elected members of parliament will go through their vetting process today, and thereafter uh, it will be uh, next week. It's supposed to be the swearing in of those members. Several of those <coughs> members are part of the formation process for the incoming government. Um, all documents have been already submitted, or yeah, the last one will be submitted today. But let's say eight of the nine were submitted already, uh, being processed by the specific entities that deal with that, which I explained about in a previous bra broadcast. And we are awaiting feedback if documentation, extra documentation is needed, etc., then that is requested and on a daily, weekly basis, uh, we are in constant contact with the candidates as well as with His Excellency Governor Eugene B. Holiday to get that information to the necessary um, stakeholders. So it's progressing well and we expect to be able to live up to the date, the deadline date that was given and I believe the 23rd or 4th of February to finalize that process. So maybe the follow-up question slash answer would be 
those members that are now swearing in as members of parliament um, to be able to take up the post of um, in government. Um, it is usually incompatible, but some of us who are sitting ministers would be able to hold both posts until the new government sits. And then the next set, so in the case, as I can mention on the National Alliance, uh, we have already sitting four members who are in government with the four returning. The next four members on our list in the election would then be eligible for the seats in three, sorry. Three of the four ministers are actually re-elected to Parliament. So once we are approved to continue as ministers, then the next three members um, will then be eligible to move up from the National Alliance slate. So six are already in. So whoever got seventh, eighth, ninth highest votes would then be eligible to become members of Parliament. I hope by that you can understand and then there will be a second swearing in of the next batch because then once we are to be sworn in as ministers again then we must relinquish our seat in parliament thank you prime minister lyndon you have the floor question to minister weaver minister of domain affairs um minister can you explain to the people uh, what a May brief means? Does a May brief, a May brief mean um, as you obtain domain land, do the person have a right to sell, to buy, to sublease? Uh, Minister, please um, explain to the people of St. Martin. According to a reliable, reliable source, persons are using domain land to enrich themselves. So explain, please, um, Minister, to the people of, of, of St. Martin. Good morning. Thank you for the question. A made brief is basically just an uh, extract from the cadaster, which states the parcel of land with the, the number. Um, there's commercial, residential. Um, if you have commercial, you're allowed to build a commercial unit on it and therefore have a business. So in that case, yes, you can gain money from having a business on the mainland. Um, a residential unit, depending where it is, you're limited to how many units you're allowed to build on it. Um, so that all depends on where it is located and what it states. Um, you're not allowed to sell over the land without having a structure on it. Um, so that, that's in just, that's it. That's basically it. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Waver. Andrew Bishop, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Brother Daika. I have a question for the Minister of Vami. I've seen another garbage dump is being erected in the KB area. The residents said that they have been complaining about this unsanitary and unsightly area which is a health hazard, how soon could we see it cleaned up? It's on top of the hill. Thank you for your question. Um, I've heard about this as well. So the department is looking into it to ensure that it's being handled as soon as possible and that the right approach is being done. Um, I think what happens is with the construction sites, a lot of the haulers then would take it from <coughs> the construction site instead of taking it to the landfill being that the late hours that it's closed that they are dumping it there although we don't have proof of it um, it's hard then to tackle who's illegally dumping at that location but we're looking in ways and means as to see how we can tackle it thank you thank, thank you. you minister thank you minister waiver uh, dimitri you have the floor hi my next question is for the justice minister uh, minister duran um, last week, you mentioned um, statistics regarding stolen vehicles from one particular insurance company. Um, my question to you is, does the Justice Ministry expect to publish statistics on all reported crimes for 2019, especially considering official crime statistics have not been published for a couple of years? 
And if this is the case, when can we expect the statistics? Thank you, Dimitri, for your question. In regards to publishing the statistics, I will check with the relevant stakeholders and get back to you as soon as possible. And if this has not been done, as you stated, I will definitely look into why it has not been done and work on it and get it done as soon as possible so that the public can be informed. Thank you, Minister Duran. We now move on to the final round of questions. Nakisha, you have the floor. Uh, my question is for Minister Irian. Um, can you provide an update on the current number plates for 2020? Thank you for your question. The 2020 number plates are not ready as yet. However, we urge the public to pay the road uh, tax before the deadline, which is at the end of February. You are also required by law to have the plates on your vehicle by the end of February, but uh, the, I will be requesting from the Ministry of Justice to take note of the matter with the number plates that weren't de delivered as expected uh, due, to, due to some um, technicalities with the manufacturer and we were unable to get them on time. But we also had uh, an issue with the quality of the plates, uh, so we will be uh, changing vendors. We have changed vendors. Um, and the plates should be here hopefully um, the next month. Uh, yes, that'll be it for that. Thank you, Minister Edion. Lyndon, you have the floor. Question to the Minister of Justice. Minister of Justice, um, recently there was a court case um, where people from St. Martin have families, husband, boyfriend in the prison in Holland and wanted they to come back to St. Martin. But um, the Dutch government, um, they said that the Pine Blunt prison is not according to international standard. Where, where, where is the prison stand as we speak today? Thank you for your question, Mr. Brown. Um, I believe in a previous press briefing, I answered this question in regards to why the inmates were not able to be housed here. We all know we have a capacity issue, especially since Irma. More than half of the cells were damaged. And that is the main reason why our inmates were housed, are being housed in the Netherlands and also partially in Curacao. So that is the main issue regarding that. Concerning the standards, we all know that the prison has been an issue and we are working towards getting it up to standard. And we also have discussions in regards to a building of a new prison. So that is a that is my answer to you right now. So I stated it before, and that is still the stance of the ministry right now in regards to that. Thank you, Minister Duran. Andrew, you have the floor. Thank you, Michael. My question is for the Minister of Vomi again. Following the recent Korean falls, most of the roads, including the LB Scott Road and the Walter J. Nisbet Road, has been seen with several potholes. I spoke with Mr. Bonkamper, who said that the asphalt machine is down. How soon could we get this machine up and have the roads patched? Thank you for your question. As I mentioned last week as well, that we are in discussions with Windward Roads to have a schedule ready, and then as soon as possible that we will be going out again, because due to the heavy rain that we have received, it has increased the number of potholes and the small ones that were there has um, gotten a little bigger. So we're trying to do this as soon as possible to ensure that um, the potholes don't grow anymore. Thank you. Thanks, Minister. Thank you, Minister Waver. Dimitri, you have the final question. My final question is to Minister Waver. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, it was reported that um, one particular company was dumping oil in Guana Bay or or Don Beach, I'm not exactly sure which one now. Um, the prosecutor's office has said that they have not received any official complaint about the matter. Was this matter handled internally by Rami? And if so, what was the conclusion? Thank you for your question. I think you talked about the oyster pond, by the pond where they had the, the company's truck was located there. Um, the ministry has approached the company and together with the police department who were also present and made a report 
um, they approach the company and the co company <coughs> has been uh, found liable and agreed to pay all the damages that has been caused and also are planning to make a extra say donation to the NGOs that were involved in the help of the cleanup. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Waver. Honorable Ministers of the Council, members of the media, online viewers and radio listeners, this brings us to the end of the live Council of Ministers press briefing for today, Wednesday, February 5th, 2020. For rebroadcast, tune in at 7 p.m. on St. Martin Cable TV and via St. Martin Gov Radio 107.9 FM. For video on demand, log on to the official government's website at stmartingov.org. On behalf of the Department of Communication and the Government of St. Martin, bidding you a pleasant day further.